So welcome to Opening Doors to a Richer English Curriculum, Door in the Wall by H.G. Wells. I'm Bob. I'm the author of the Opening Doors books and Verity Jones and Leah Crawford are my co-authors of Opening Doors to a Richer English Curriculum. One for ages six to nine, one for 10 to 13. But this is a completely independent module. It's linked with the books, but uh, you will enjoy this in itself. And above all, I hope that all the children wanting to learn more about English will really get their teeth into this and also start to learn about a very, very famous writer, H.G. Wells. A little quote from the short story, A Door in the Wall. In a trice, he came into a garden which has haunted him all his life. Wallace, as an older person, is telling a friend about something remarkable that happened to him when he was able to move through a green door into a very, very different land. We need some opening doors talk first. We're very keen on learning dialogues. We think that a huge amount is learnt about a rich and exciting text through exploring, discussing and wondering about the language, the style, the meaning, the inferences. So how about some opening doors talk now? And how about basing it, first of all, on the illustration? It's by Vicky Cox. It's from the book. And we'd like you to talk about three things. What kind of image is this? What kind of garden is this? Where would you like to explore first if you were in that garden? So why not pause, discuss the picture and this whole notion of going into a huge fantasy space, a garden, and what you might find there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope there were lots of ideas. And here we've got an extract from the story itself. Let's see if we can tell you a bit more by reading it. Then he said he had a gust of emotion. He made a run for it lest hesitation should grip him again. He went plump with outstretched hand through the green door and let it slam behind him. And so in a trice, he came into the garden that has haunted all his life. It was very difficult for Wallace to give me his full sense of that garden into which he came. Well, at this point, why not compare some of your ideas with this opening here? There was something in the very air of it that exhilarated, that gave one a sense of lightness and good happening and well-being. There was something in the sight of it that made all its colour clean and perfect and subtly luminous. In the instant of coming into it, one was exquisitely glad, as only in rare moments and when one is young and joyful, one can be glad in the world. And everything was beautiful there. Well, I wonder how some of your initial ideas about the illustration compared with the beginning of the impressions that Wallace gets going into the garden. Sometimes we think it's a very good idea for children to really engage with the text by trying to find links or connections or trying to find the words that they enjoy, or particularly the words they don't understand. I think that's really important too. We call it mark and note, where in any passage, in any poem, you can read it, and by any means, whether it's a chart form, or whether it's bubbles um, that you write in, or whether it's just underlining and writing around the text, you can begin to own the text to explore the words. It does take a while, 
to understand and appreciate something with richness in it. Why not try marking and noting? Here's a possible way of just highlighting something in red. Um, here's a phrase which interests me. And so in a trice he came into the garden that has haunted all his life. I think that's incredibly interesting because haunted normally means something else really to us. Take a look at that bubble. I'm just writing in there that some of my first impressions when I first read this short story. Haunted all his life. Hmm. Well, haunted implies ghost-like and scary. A haunted house full of creepy noises or sights. I'm not sure this is quite the same. Is it something we can't forget and why? It's a particularly interesting phrase and it's one of those phrases we think that if you talk it through, there's a lot more to be learned in depth. Something can haunt us and come back to us. But is it something good? Is it something bad? Is it just something that's maybe made an impression? So a slightly different use of the word haunted. I've also marked in red some of the other things that make up a kind of theme of, of exultation or joy. It's rather wonderful um, going into this garden. And we think of all the associations that we've got with gardens uh, or that may be a new associations um, linked with books read, things seen, things talked about. Marking in red is just one way of trying to find a theme. Mark and note. It's something you could apply to other poems and passages that you read. It's got to be time to write. Um, we're fond of quality text to quality writing journeys on the Opening Doors team. And remember, we get into so many schools across the country and we have done in our careers. And it's absolutely incredible the way that children's imagination is sparked by a great writer. There's a reason why their work has endured. So we're wondering now if you've learnt a lot through the mark and note exercises and through thinking about interesting words and phrases a little bit more, their meaning, also their spelling their sound, their shape. What does it mean to you? This is why we need these slightly more in-depth engagements with what we're reading. And now that can trigger some fantastic writing. What do you think the narrator will find in the garden itself? Can you imitate the style of H.G. Wells? The vocabulary you've already encountered will help. I would say just keep to one or two characters, keep a focus, and talk now about some of the other books that you may have read or the other ideas that you've got from thinking about gardens. It might be The Secret Garden, very famous story, but it might be others. So why not pause, have a think about other books you've read and about how you might begin a taster draft, which is just short. It could be 100 words. It could be 10 minutes. I'll leave you now to plan and to write that taster draft. Can you create your own world beyond the door? Well, I hope you really enjoyed that and I hope there was some terrific writing. I'm sure there was. And when we write and uh, in response to a great uh, literary figure, we do sometimes go a bit further. Um, we often get teachers saying they are amazed at what their pupils do and the pupils themselves are amazed. That's really a, something even better. Um, it's something that just fires my imagination when I see a special word or phrase 
and I realise the imagination that uh, has been fired up and stimulated in children's minds. It's a fantastic thing to be involved with as a teacher. Here's our Crown House Pupils Worksite. Thanks to Crown House for keeping this. You'll see some terrific writing going through this link and also in to, especially into the other four books because they've been around a lot longer. Um, <clears throat> you'll discover lots of things which other pupils have written, which I think you will enjoy. Perhaps the greatest way to boost our knowledge and understanding of English is to read, read, read. And reading quality is, is so important and it's so much fun. We've got a whole range of books here from old favourites to new books um, <clears throat> for you to delve into. Some of them are harder, like The Turn of the Screw. Um, they might be more for the older ones. Um, some of them are very accessible and very recent narrative dramatic stories like The Boy in the Tower. Um, and so do try. We think you're going to learn a lot about narrative technique, about how stories are told from this unit. And that's a concept we're really, really interested in. So do go away and read, read, read. Um, and th through that reading, you're probably going to learn the most. For those who want to go further, there are always more questions and here are more. How does HG Wells create a distinctive world on the other side of the green door? We've got for you a reading I've made of a much longer extract. So it's a good time perhaps to turn to that and hear me read much more about the garden. Why don't you compare your ideas, your taste of drafts with a much longer extract and the um, We've also guided you to where the full story is available. These questions will take you further for some of you who wish to. Um, these modules are very much about choice, about how uh, you really want to uh, move this journey of learning. Um, you can do a little bit, you can do a lot. This will certainly take you further. So we want to try and help you for those who, who wish to. Um, that's a big question. The support questions around are designed to help um, and note the greater depth question. That just means further extension, further ideas, further reading um, that links in with the link reading list. And some full writing titles for you. You can develop that taste to draft further. But you might want to start on one of these. Imagine Wallace finds a different creature in the garden. Continue the vision. Remember, this is after you've listened to me uh, read the full version and the text is there posted online, too. And you'll notice that Wallace meets a panther, but it's not quite the dangerous kind of panther that we might expect. Invent some other games which Wallace played in the garden. Create a portal scene for your own world, which appears to veer from real to virtual. How does the main character enter the world? We think you're well set now. You've come through the stages of learning, and it's often about stages. And each stage, you get to know the text a little bit better. That's really what we found as, as teachers and with our links with schools and our, in our own careers, you can offer this access step by step. It's manageable, palatable, and then it becomes even more satisfying than if the text was understood at a first read. Do enjoy your writing and let the pen flow. Just a reminder, these are our books. There are five in the series. And we hope and believe that they can help you further. We really do think that the final stage of this is 
We want to see your work. We want to read it. We want to know what you've done. We're interested. Please share your work because some of it we can post on Crown House and do email me um, some of the work you do. It will be really terrific. We do have a real belief that the knowledge can grow through engaging with these fascinating texts. The skills can grow through examples like Mark and Note and the confidence can grow. And then there's the beginnings of an emotional link and connection with the content of the story. That green door, what was found the other side, um, the strange fantasy creatures, and we hope you'll really enjoy it.